Maryland women's basketball continues to right the ship after two early season losses. The men's team's shooting woes were once again on display to open Big Ten play, and the football team is headed to the Music City. All that and more coming up on this edition of The Left Bench. I'm starting to be able to decipher when to be aggressive and then when to start kicking the ball out. So I feel like that's beneficial for us. Got on the glass, so it was fearless getting to the rim. We, we needed that kind of scoring and, and rebounding. Welcome back to The Left Bench, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Alexa Wood, alongside Matthew News. And Matt, a lot of big, big headlines coming out of College Park right now. Yeah, I mean, the, men, uh, the women's team's finding its stride. The men's team just opened conference play. But more recently, the announcement everybody was waiting for on Sunday has been made. And that was Maryland football is playing in the trans-perfect Music City Bowl in Nashville, Tennessee against Auburn. Maryland and Auburn were spur off down south on December 30th. The Tigers ended the season fifth in the SEC West with a 6-6 six six overall record. This is the third consecutive season the Terps will play a Power 5 team in a bowl game. Here's head coach Michael Loxley on how the Terps feel about heading to Nashville. Um, obviously, we're really excited to be selected to play in the trans-perfect Music City Bowl. I know our players, our program is really looking forward to playing inside of a great uh, football venue, the uh, Nissan Stadium and a great football city down here in Nashville. Um, you know, we're thrilled to have a, a, an opponent, uh, the quality opponent like an SEC team, like Auburn. Um, I know Turf Nation is ready to come and support us down there. A great opportunity. Back to College Park now, and Maryland women's basketball remains undefeated at home after dominating second half over then-undefeated George Mason. The Patriots came to the Xfinity Center ready to play, leading Maryland by nine at the half. But the second half was a different story. Maryland outscored George Mason 26-12 in the third, regaining the lead. The fourth was more of the same as Maryland grabbed the 86-77 win. Cheyenne Sellers recorded her first double-double of the season with a career-high 28 points and 13 rebounds. Terps handed the Patriots their first loss of the season and will take on Northwestern on Sunday as they start conference play. Here's head coach Brenda Fries after the game. Uh, just, you know, seven turnovers in that first quarter were kind of hard to stomach, but um, not always, you know, uh, is every game going to be pretty and, and flawless. I, I loved how we responded coming out of the locker room in the second half. Um, that's who we are. Uh, Faith was huge. Uh, I thought she sparked that and got on the glass, so it was fearless getting to the rim. We, we needed that kind of scoring and, and rebounding. Another huge reason for Maryland women's basketball's wins this season can be attributed to the emergence of young talent coming off the bench. TSC's Ryan Martin has more. Ryan? That's right, guys. And so far this season, sophomore Bree McDaniel has teamed up with freshman Riley Nelson and Emily Fisher to give head coach Brenda Freeze many exciting options with her rotation. First up, we got to talk about Bree McDaniel. As injuries have already begun to impact the Terps' season, McDaniel has stepped up as one of Maryland's biggest contributors in recent games. McDaniels earned the first two starts of her career last week against Niagara and George Mason with Lavender Briggs sideline. And the sophomore was ready. McDaniel shot almost 60% from the field across both games while posting 18 points, four assists, and five rebounds against Niagara. Against George Mason, McDaniel scored nine points before a second quarter lower back injury forced her out of the game. McDaniel earned the two starts after making what is so far the play of the season for Maryland. In the Terps' one score win over Syracuse, McDaniel called game by pulling away a gritty steal on the Orange's final possession. The takeaway was one of nine steals McDaniel had in a two-game span for Maryland. Playing next to McDaniel in the backcourt is the freshman, Riley Nelson, and she has felt right at home in her first season in College Park. The five-star recruit out of Clarksburg, Maryland, saw her playing time skyrocketed when the Terps traveled to Mexico for the Cancun Challenge over Thanksgiving break. Nelson averaged under nine minutes a game before the tournament, but saw the average jump to over 25 minutes during Maryland's three international games. Nelson's 5.3 points per game on over 40% shooting leads a talented freshman class that makes up six of the seven bench pieces Freeze has at her disposal when accounting for injuries. And last but not least is Emily Fisher, who will be huge for Maryland's front court over the next couple of months, especially with Emma Chardon going down with a torn ACL last week. Fisher has seen an increased role in each of Maryland's last five games, culminating with a career-high eight rebounds and two blocks over 29 minutes against George Mason. Playing almost the entire second half, Fisher knows where she needs to improve to keep getting on the court. 
I think overall, I just need to work on my conditioning. It's been hopefully getting easier. <laughs> And when her, McDaniel, or Nelson are on the court, the Terps barely lose a step. Maryland's five starters have averaged a plus-minus of 23.6 points per game so far this season, and that's a stat that doesn't waver when you look at the Terps' bench for some different rotations, especially these three prominent pieces. Guys, be sure to look out for this trio, and they could be used heavily going forward as Freeze continues to utilize her depth with the Big Ten opener against Northwestern this Sunday. Back to you guys. Yeah, Ryan, I mean, you mentioned Free McDaniel, and after the Syracuse game, Freeze and McDaniel actually shared that she went to her coach and she asked to be one of the starting point guards, and I think it's fair to say she's proven that she deserves to be there. Yeah, I mean, that's great to see her leadership wanting to take over that role, but then that freshman, Riley Nelson, 15 points against Niagara, that's a huge performance for her, and hopefully she continues that later on the season. Six wrestlers traveled to Las Vegas this past weekend for the highly touted Cliff Keen Invitational. Five Terps were out of championship contention on Friday, but Jackson Smith in the 197-pound weight class extended his weekend to Saturday. Smith received the ninth seed in his weight class bracket and made quick work of his Friday duels. He earned a pair of decision victories over Purdue's Ben Vanadia and Northern Iowa's Wyatt Volker before advancing to the semifinals. In the semis on Saturday, Smith knocked off number one seed Tanner Sloan in an 8-2 decision to set up a final against Trent Hidley. But a Hidley takedown was the difference in the final as Smith dropped the bout by a 5-2 decision. Back to the gridiron because 16 Maryland football players earned conference accolades this year. Most Terps earned all Big Ten honors since Maryland joined the conference. Talia Tungvailoa and Tarheep Still were both named second team all Big Ten selections by the league's coaches. Five other Terps were named to the all Big Ten third team. Delmar Glay is the only unanimous decision. Ty Felton, Jay Sean Jones, and Corey Deitches were all selected by the media. And Re Ruben Hippolyte the second was selected by the coaches. Nine other Terps earned all Big Ten honorable mentions. The awards mark the most Maryland offensive players selected to the All Big Ten since joining the conference and the most defensive players receiving recognition since 2014. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back we'll look into what went wrong in Maryland men's basketball's conference opener at Indiana. And TSC Sam Jane joins us in Studio B to examine how one new Terp is adjusting to life in College Park. Stay right here. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Welcome back, everyone, to The Left Bench, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Alex Woon, and that's Matthew News. We mentioned it before, but Big Ten basketball is upon us. And Maryland men's basketball started its conference play on the road in Bloomington on Friday. Yeah, that's right, Alexa, but it probably wasn't the performance that many men's basketball fans were hoping to see. Aside from its 103-point performance against Ryder last week, Maryland men's basketball has had issues putting the ball into the basket all season. And that problem persisted at Assembly Hall Friday night. Maryland looked to start fast against Indiana, but that did not happen. The Hoosiers shot out to a 16-4 lead thanks to a Khalil Ware 3, three of 12 first-half points for the IU sophomore. Jahari Long provided a much-needed spark off the bench with six first-half points, but the Terps entered the half down 40-28. to Shooting woes were evident in the second half for Maryland. The Terps shot a staggering 28% from the floor and just one for eight from behind the arc. Trey Galloway added eight points in the second half, 
for the Hoosiers, and Indiana handed Maryland its fourth loss in eight games, 65-53. to Here's head coach Kevin Willard with some choice words for his veterans after the game. We did some things, you know, um, to start the game that just, you know, just was just um, – it makes you scratch your head, to be honest with you, what some guys are thinking and what some guys are doing. And, um, you know, I, I don't mind, you know, a freshman going out there and missing or doing some stuff, but we have some older guys right now that are just doing stuff that you're like, Man, what are we doing? Like, you can't do that. Maryland's men's basketball is clearly in some growing pains, figuring out rotations and offensive strategy. But on the right side, Kevin Willard might have found a much-needed missing piece. TSC Sam Jane joins us in Studio B to tell us which Maryland men's basketball player has been impacting the starting lineup. Sam? Yeah, guys, a lot of woes on the offensive side of the ball. You saw that in the loss to Indiana. But a big reason for the Terps' tough start to the season is the troubling fifth starter. Heading into the year, Jameer Young, Deshaun Harris-Smith, Donta Scott, and Julian Reese seem to be the four go-to guys. But after switching around that fifth spot, Kevin Willard might have found his guy, the transfer from Indiana. Jordan Geronimo has claimed to seem to have claimed that fifth spot in the starting lineup after Willard tried out a couple of different options. It started with Geronimo in the first two games before being replaced by Noah Batchelor against UAB, who struggled beyond the arc. Freshman Jamie Kaiser then broke into the lineup, replacing Batchelor, but his shooting woes were on full display too. After both struggled, Willard turned back to the Indiana transfer, and he has started the past four games, including a few strong performances. It seemed that Willard has settled on his starting five, partly because of the differences in the transfer's performance. Geronimo has been so much more productive in the starting five. He's averaging seven points and nearly four rebounds in games he started, and when he's coming off the bench, it's only three points and three rebounds. Geronimo's scoring has significantly impacted the team as a whole as well. In games that Geronimo comes off the bench, Maryland averages just 52 points a game. In games he starts, that number jumps all the way up to 74. Here's what head coach Kevin Willard said after the game against Ryder on what Geronimo has brought to this team. I think Jordan Geronimo is playing with, a, with tremendous energy. Um, he's exactly what I thought he would be for us. Um, he's given us, he's doing some really good things on the defensive end. He's protecting a lot of guys. We're able to switch with him. Um, you know, he plays 23 minutes and he's plus 32. That just tells you how much, how hard he's playing, how much energy he's playing with. Geronimo is beginning to settle into his starting role, but he's not completely penciled in yet. With his size, his rebounding ability will certainly help on both ends of the floor, but his lack of consistent shooting might hurt the spacing of this team. With a squad that has already shown poor shooting from deep, Geronimo has only added to that problem with only one made three this season. Willard has a lot of work to do, not only understanding Geronimo's role in the lineup, because he's proven he can start, but understanding the spacing with the lack of shooting from Geronimo, Deshaun Harris-Smith, and Juju Reese. Now guys, although Geronimo has shown good production in the starting lineup, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw some more lineup changes. You just heard Willard noting that he needs more from his veterans after that Indiana loss. Could Geronimo be benched again? Could he be solidified as a starter? We're not quite sure. There are a lot of questions around this team, as we know. But one thing is for certain, Jordan Geronimo has helped while starting. Back to you guys. I mean, Sam, you mentioned it. He had great performances against South Alabama and Ryder, but then on Indi at Indiana, he went 0 for 5 from the field. So when Willard's looking for that fifth player, he definitely wants to find consistency. Yeah, and I mean, Jordan's a guy that, you know, he has Big Ten experience. He's played at Indiana for a couple of seasons. If he can, you know, replicate what he did at Indiana here at Maryland, he could be a crucial part heading into the rest of the season. Oh, definitely. And it's no question Maryland men's basketball is struggling on the offensive end, especially from three-point range. But there might be an answer on the bench. TSC's Ricky Podgorski tells us how one sniper on the roster has been a little banged up, but has taken to social media to show his sharp shooting, something the Terps desperately need. Maryland men's basketball is in need of an offensive surge, and that surge might just be injured on the bench. Chance Stevens, a transfer from Loyola Marymount, also known as Sniper. Maryland fans should be expecting, you know, a lot of threes. They'll be expecting a lot of threes. Stevens transferred from LMU in the offseason, but injured his knee prior to the season. It's been great, you know, other than my injury, but even with that, it's my injury has, like, recovery has been really good. Although Stevens has yet to play a game with the Terps, his shooting is no mystery to the public eye.
In his freshman year at LMU, Stevens made 52 shots. 49 of those came from three-point range. Stevens grew up in California where his dad taught him to shoot, training rigorously. And get up uh, probably like 500 jump shots from mid-range, three. Eventually developing into a sharpshooter where his dad dubbed him Sniper. He's like, you know what, you should just change your Instagram name to uh, Chance the Sniper. And we was, we was laughing about it and I just did it. And ever since, that's what people just called me, a sniper. Stevens is now sidelined due to injury, but has taken to social media to show his training and progress. I just like to show people um, what I can do. And Stevens posts videos on X and Instagram going 73 for 81 from three-point range, a 90% clip, even canning 65 triples in a row making shot after shot. He had to work at that every day, shooting 500, 600, 700 jump shots a day, just keep doing the same thing. So I just wanna also uh, not just show people me, but inspire people that they do something every day that you know they can master it. Hundreds of thousands of people across social media have watched Stevens' training videos, but many can't wait to watch him take the court at Xfinity Center, including Chance himself. Yeah, I can't wait to get back on the court and uh, show the Maryland fans what I got. There is no immediate timetable for Stevens' debut. The only thing for certain is that the sniper will be getting in reps from beyond the arc. So when the time comes, Chance Stevens can make an impact. For Terrapin Sports Central, I'm Ricky Podgorski. Thanks, Ricky. And I mean, you saw from that package, I mean, he can make a three and he can make a lot of them. And I think that's something that Maryland men's basketball is really missing this season. And Matt, you ex uh, mentioned it earlier, but they're struggling shooting behind the arc. And clearly they have someone on their bench that could be a valuable asset. Yeah, definitely. Stay right there because when we come back, we'll play one of our all-time favorite games here on the left bench, headbands. And we'll name our Terp of the Week, Pro Terp, and Top 5 plays. Don't go anywhere. I tell my son, I love you every single day. Now my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Got a new house. It's looking pretty cool so far. A place that I call home. I'm teaching Louise how to cook some lasagna. It only takes a spark to make a fire start. Thank you. Study, please. I think I finally found a place to make my own. A place that I call home. This place that I call home. I think I found. You need to do something to feel okay to drive. You're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back, everyone, to the Left Bench, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Alexa Wooten here with Matt Matthew News, and Matt, we have a fun game to play today. Why don't you tell us how it works? Yeah. So basically, our producers picked out some athletes and coaches in Maryland athletics. Uh, they're going to tape it to our foreheads, and then it's our job to ask the right questions to you guess that term. All right. Well, Alex, why don't you come off? Give us our first set of headbands. And I think going back, you beat me the last time. I correct? did. I, I think got you got both, and I only got one. I got yeah, I got two. So, yeah. so okay. I, I kind of have to avenge my. Okay. I hope this looks good on my forehead. I, I'm nervous. My makeup's gonna come off with the tape. Well, good thing I don't have to worry about that. So. <laughs> okay. Can you see it if I hold it like this? Yeah. Can okay. you see mine? Yeah, I'll try not to hold it in front of my mouth. Okay. All right. Do you want to start? 
Uh, yeah, I'll start. Okay. So we have um, uh, men's or women's sport? Men's. Men's, okay. So is it football? Yes. It is football, okay. Mm -hmm. um, offense or defense? Offense. Offense. Yeah. So we got Talia? No. Jay Sean Jones? No. Caden Prather? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, I completely blanked. He's defense. <laughs> defense, I'm okay. being dumb, I'm dumb, sorry. Well, that made it harder. So, um, <laughs> uh, Ruben Hippolyte? No. So, Bo Braid? Mm-mm. Tar Heap Still? Yeah. Tar Heap Still, sorry, all right. Still. One sorry, for one. that was my fault, I blanked no, for a No, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Okay, um, men's or women's sport? It is a men's sport. Men's sport, okay. Uh, fall or winter? It's winter. Okay, so, basketball? It is basketball, yeah. Okay. Um, one of the starters? No, he comes off the bench. Okay. Freshman? Uh, he's not a freshman, no. Okay. He um, played last year. Played last year, okay. There's a hint. Um, hmm. I don't know, should we like giving out hints? I don't know. <laughs> kind of struggling, I don't know. Um, has he started at all or only come off the bench? I believe he's only come off the bench. Only come off the bench, yeah. okay. Um, I like know who I'm thinking, I can't get his name. Callum Swanton Rogers? No, not him. Okay. Think a little smaller. Smaller, yeah. okay. Hmm. Smaller coming off the bench. Made an impact on Friday night at Assembly Hall. Oh, Jahari Long. Jahari Long. There, there we you go. go. There you go. Okay. I mean, look at us. One for one each time. I mean, <laughs> I almost messed you up a little bit there. It's hey, my bad. I battled, I battled through it. We're good. We're good. Okay, here's the next one. Okay. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> Is that one? Okay. What's my mistake? Oh, no. Okay. All right, thanks for hitting me. Oh, okay. Appreciate it. Do you start it off again? All right, is it uh, women's? Yes. It is, okay. Is it fall? No. Uh, winter? Yes. So is it women's basketball? Yes. So we got, all right, is she returner or freshman? Returner. Returner. Uh, I'm gonna go with Faith Masonis. No. No. So um, not a returner, or it no, is a returner. Return. It is a returner, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, Renee Alexander? No. Bree McDaniel? Yes. All right, <laughs> look at that, two for two. All right, let's see if I can match it. All right. All right. Uh, men's or women's? Uh, it's uh, men's. All right, fall? Nope. All right, so winter? No. So, uh, spring? It is. See, I don't think you're going to get this one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> spring season hasn't even happened, guys. Come on. I know, I know. They oh. set you up. Okay. So. Um, men's spring, is it baseball? It is baseball. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Is your turner? He is, yep. He's okay. a returner. Pretty well known. Okay. Um, I mean, there's recent news that just came out about him. So. I know who you. Oh, gosh. Um, That's the only hit I'm giving you. That's it. Okay, so recent news about him, returner. Right. Was he a big name like last year? He was. Made a big he was impact? just named captain. Oh, I just saw. Oh, oh my God. I just saw this. He got the number three jersey. He did. Oh. He did. I can. I have Returner, the face. I have captain. the number. I cannot put a name to the face right now. One more hint. So his first and last name start with the same letter. I am. Come on. I can see it. I can see his face. Oh my All gosh. All right, that's it. I'm gonna oh. have to. It's Kevin Keister, <sighs> the new captain of Maryland baseball. That's right. Yeah. So I mean. Sorry, Kevin. I I could. I saw the video. I saw them. Him get it in the house. They had the jersey and everything. That's on me. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, <laughs> what a great moment for Kevin, uh, named captain. But mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I won that one. So I get, I mean, you know what? I'll give you that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, great job playing Headbands, Matt. You know, you get the win. Great for you. And yep. I think it's that about that time that we crown our Terp of the Week. This week's Terp of the Week is the Terp who just sent, set two new career highs, Cheyenne Sellers. First in the Terp's 70-point win over Niagara, Sellers dished out a career-high 11 assists, her first double-digit assist outing in her career. Then on Sunday, Sellers set a career-high of 28 points to give her team the comeback win over George Mason. Two of those points came from a buzzer beater in the third quarter. Look at that nifty over-under move to get the ball off in time. Congrats to Cheyenne on being crowned our Terp of the Week. Staying on the hardwood, our pro Terp has found a home overseas in Japan. After a six-year stint in the NBA with the Portland Trailblazers and Minnesota Timberwolves, Jake Lehman signed with the Miyakawa Seawolves this past summer. And it's safe to say he's adjusting well to life in Japan. Lehman is averaging over 14 points per game along with five boards and three assists in the B League, Japan's professional men's basketball league. Congrats to, Terp on be Congrats to Jake on being named our pro Terp. 
And now it's time for one of my favorite parts of the show. It's a top five plays. You want to get started? Yeah, let's get it going. All righty. At number five, we go to the Xfinity Center where Jameer puts up a shot. It's not going to go in, but look who it is. It's the big man, Juju Reese, to put it in for an easy two against Ryder. And number four, I already showed you this play, but Cheyenne Sellers buzzer beater in the third. The junior drives in, and look at this nifty over, under, right before the buzzer sounds. Great play from the junior. At number three, let's just say at the Xfinity Center, McDaniel, no look between the legs to Brene Alexander, who splashes the three. What awareness from McDaniel to find Alexander right behind her for the three-pointer. And who else would get number two other than the one that took home second place? Jackson Smith with the massive takedown. I mean, he just picks him up and slams him to the ground, gaining him four near fall points. And at number one, it's the walk on. It's the freshman Lucas Sotel with his first career college basket. He ran the floor and he got rewarded with a big time two for his first basket. That'll do it for this edition of the left bench, the last time of the semester. But don't worry because Ben Wolf and Andrew McBride will be at the desk Wednesday for our football and focus show, our final show of the semester. You can follow along with all of Terrapin Sports Central's coverage on X, Instagram, and online at TerrapinSportsCentral.com. We hope everyone has a happy holiday and wish you an early happy new year. We'll see you in 2024.